Hello, Mr. Andy here. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple more geometric construction problems. Uh, first up is the latch plate. Um, I've got them squeezed together on the screen. So on the right hand side is the uh, latch plate drawing that you'll be working from, or a very similar one to this. And uh, on the left monitor, right now I have the finished part. Okay. Um, so this is what it should look like. Uh, we have a center line through the whole part. I have two center marks for these radii. And then I have a hole pattern, so I have connected center lines between the hole pattern. Um, so that's the finished product. Let's uh, go into a new drawing, so an inch drawing, and let's start creating this part. Well, let's take a look at this part. A couple things to notice. One, um, notice the lower half and upper half are identical, right through the center line. We call that a symmetric part or symmetrical part. And so uh, we can just draw half of it and mirror it at the end to get the upper half. So first of all, we're only going to draw what's below the center line. Secondly, notice that there are no uh, overall dimensions, especially vertically, uh, so we don't really know where this line is. It's not dimension, nor do we really know where this line, because it's not dimension. Um, the only thing we do know is this radius of 0.56 out from the center mark. So that means this line and this line, because they're tangent, have to be that same exact distance away, 0.56. So that'll help us to construct. Um, notice that lots of uh, dimensions are tied to these hole centers, so they are kind of critical to the part. We have some fillets in here. We'll uh, use the fillet tool today uh, to do some fillets. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to start up here, and I'm just going to come down uh, a couple inches, and then over five, six, seven inches. Uh, that should do it. I want to remember where I am, so I'm going to put a circle right there with a diameter of 0.5. Now I want you to notice my toolbars, because I'm squeezed so tight here, are very different looking from yours. I'm going to do a lot of, of keystroke, shortcut keys in AutoCAD, and I'll try and tell you those as I use them. Okay. Alright, so I want to get my 0.56 lines out here, so I'm going to O for offset. That's the letter O. Um, 0.56. Click and come down. Click and go to the left. Now, uh, I do want to show you uh, the fillet tool, so we're going to type F for fillet. You can find it up here under modify. It's right there. You'll find it up on your toolbar. Um, so we're going to do fillet, and I'm going to type R for radius. And I want you to notice, uh, I'm going to set it to zero just to show you what that does. Uh, this is kind of handy. I'm going to click those two lines, and it makes a sharp corner. In fact, if uh, I had a crisscrossed corner there and I needed to clean it up as a sharp corner, I can do a fillet, F, enter, and pick those two lines and it automatically trims it off for me. A very handy way and it's kind of faster than the trim tool um, when you need sharp corners. So I need a 0.56 radius here. I'm going to type F for fillet. Radius 0.56 and I'll pick those two corners and get that it in there and it trims it all up and makes it beautiful. Alright, I need to offset over to get this second hole center and, and some of these other dimensions, so I'm going to offset. Uh, that's O for offset, uh, 3.5. And we'll click and go to the right. And I'm going to take that line and I'm going to pull it down. Sorry. Tug that down. Because I'm going to need this intersection right here in a second. Um, I could copy this circle, that's CO on the keyboard, and pick that circle and hit enter. I'm going to go from here to here. Make sure you're snapping to those intersections. All right. I think next up I'm going to do this 15 degree line. And this is a really tricky line, so I want to explain it. It's a horizontal distance of 1.6 over, but it's going uphill at 15 degrees. This line right here is not. 1.6 inches long. It's a little longer than that. Um, so you cannot do this with a polar coordinate. If you said at 1.6 angle 15, it's going to be too short. So we're going to offset over 1.6 in our drawing. 1.6. So we know the line terminates at this line. And we know it's at an angle of 15, but we don't know how long it is. So I'm going to draw a line, L, enter, from this intersection. 
I want to go uphill at 15 degrees. So I'm just going to type angle. You can see it right there, the angle bracket, uh, 15, and hit enter. That's called an angle override. You can see it on my screen now. The, it's popping up. No matter how I move my mouse, I, it stays at 15 degrees unless I accidentally snap to an endpoint. So I'm going to just come out here and click. So I don't know how long that is, but it's exactly at 15 degrees, and now I can trim that corner. That was TR for trim. All right, the next line that goes up is going to go up at a 45 degree angle. Again, I don't know where it ends. I just know that it's 6.3 from the left edge to the right edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do the line first. Uh, I'll pick this end point, and I'll go angle 45. We'll just take it out there some distance. Hopefully that's far enough. So now I want to get this end line. I'm going to offset over 6.3. So offset 6.3 from the very left edge over. And there's the corner of the part. Well, we could zero fill it that. Fill it radius zero. There we go. All right, let's get the center line in. So I'm going to offset 1.5. That's the center line of the part. I'm going to shrink down just a little bit. Oop, we've got an extra line floating out there. All right. And I'll go ahead. I'm going to change the properties of that. I'm going to just throw it on the phantom layer so I don't mistake it for an object line. Uh, we could trim this off. Let's get rid of that. And I left a little piece there. We'll delete that. Make sure you get out those little pieces if you leave them behind. Um, that's a deduction if you have an extra piece of geometry floating out there. All right, let's start this inside cavity, if you will, that's in the part. So we'll start with this end over here. It's 0.94 over, so we're going to offset 0.94. And it's 0.8 down, so let's offset 0.8. There we go. Um, another quick tool I'll, I'll show you here uh, under properties. Uh, we'll leave that on. Um, I'm going to switch that to the object layer. There we go. I have a rounded corner in there, so let's fill it that. So we're going to go F for fill it. Uh, radius 0.25. And let's put that radius in. There we go. Now I want to get to the center point because I need to lay these two arcs in. So it is 3.3 uh, over. So we're going to offset 3.3. And oh, that's going to be the center point for that R.4 radius. So let's do a, a circle. C for circle. Remember that will always default to radius. And I'll put in a radius of 0.4. There we have it. Now I need this center point up here to get that 2 inch radius in. We'll come back to that in just a sec. No, we'll go ahead. So I'm going to offset 1.6 up. Offset 1.6. And then we'll put a circle in from this intersection at 2 inches. Now I'm going to zoom way up on this for a second. Um, do check this. Make sure that looks tangent. I'm going to regen here. Um, those should come to touch exactly at that point. I'm going to zoom out now. You can see where my mouse is. Um, so do watch that. Make sure that works out. Um, this is a little messy, so I'm going to do a little trimming here. I'm going to trim. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five clicks. That's a lot of wasted clicks, but that's all right. I'm going to take this out. And then I'm going to hit OK or Escape, either one. Um, and then uh, we've got to get this line over here. This line does not line up with this one, so it's 0.6 down. So I'm going to offset 0.6. And then uh, we'll flip that to the object layer. Now we'll trim and uh, we'll just take that piece out 
and let's see how many clicks we have to do to get this circle out here. Quite a few. There we go. All right. Let's do some house cleaning here. I can take all these lines out now. I'm going to take these lines out even. And I don't need that one anymore. Got a couple more trims to do. I'm going to clean up these edges over here. So trim. We'll pull that down. And this one comes actually all the way down to that point. And finally right there. All right. So we have the bottom half here. I'm going to do a little bit more work before we uh, mirror this. We're just about ready to mirror. Uh, I'm going to switch to the center layer. And then I'm going to use the center mark tool right there. It's on your dimension toolbar. And I'm going to center mark that circle. I'll hit enter, center mark that one. Hit enter to repeat, center mark that one. Um, now, the uh, textbook illustration uh, looks like, kind of looks like that. I'm not real crazy about this look. If you're going to leave it like that, um, you have to pull this one back and leave a gap here. Um, I, I think I would just do that personally. Um, some people would also, because of this rounded corner here, would stretch these out. Um, and you can certainly do so if you want. I want to estimate that distance about the same as that distance. It's about an eighth of an inch, or in a metric drawing, about three millimeters. So you could do that look if you wanted to. That's uh, an acceptable and appropriate look. Or you could leave them alone. I would not deduct points if you left them short. Uh, like you see here, actually they're covered up by dimension lines. All right, we're ready to mirror now. So I want to take all this geometry and mirror it. I'm going to go to the Modify Toolbar, and you'll find the Mirror tool up on your toolbar. Um, we're going to click on Mirror. And it says select objects. I'm going to do a crossing box and I'm going to grab everything except for the center or the phantom line that is the mirror plane. Okay, so there's no need to select this, it'll just duplicate it on top of itself. I'm going to hit enter. So I specify first point, I'll pick this end point. And then as I move my mouse, you can see the reflected image up there. Um, and whatever angle my lines at it, you can see that it kind of can cause a problem. You need to be really careful that you're getting that 180 degree polar snap that you see on your screen or pick that endpoint right there when you put it in the mirror. If you're off, it'll distort that upper half. Finally, you get a command prompt that says, do you want to erase the source object? If I said yes, it would erase all of this and give me the new half. That's handy if you need to flip a part over, flip a view over. You can say yes, delete the originals, and it will flip it. Um, and remove the originals. Well, we don't want to do that, so we're going to say no, don't erase. And we'll put that up. All right, now, um, technically this line doesn't need to be in the finished part. I'm going to take it out. And then uh, to make this hole pattern look right, this is a pattern of holes. They're dimensioned uh, with an overall width spacing and an overall height spacing. So to make it look like a pattern, I'm going to grip that center mark, and I'm going to drag it all the way over and attach it. And I'll pull these down, and I'll pull this over, so that we get a whole pattern look here. And that's how we'd like to see it, uh, connected center lines to indicate that it's a pattern. So there is the latch plate in its finished form. Okay. All right, let's throw that away. And let's close this uh, latch plate problem, and we'll actually close this out. And let's take a look at the gear arm. Here's the gear arm dimension drawing that, that you'll work from. And I'm going to zoom out just a bit so you can see the finished part. And again, let's talk a little bit about this finished drawing. There's a couple things I want you to be careful of. One, we have a nice looking uh, arc on the center layer here that we're going to show you how to put in. Secondly, as you look at the dimension line that runs through this part, if you just center mark all these circles, you're going to get all these overlapping lines, and it's not going to look right. So I'm going to zoom up on this a bit. I expect to see a single line right there, and a single line right there, and a single line there. Oop, i got two pieces, but that's okay. And then uh, probably a single line here all the way out to the end. Um, so I want to be able to see long, short, long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, all the way across. Gaps on either side of that plus mark right there. 
We have a plus mark here at the center point. I expect to see gaps there. If that line covers up, and I don't have a gap there, that's an error. So be very careful. And then here's another plus mark again with gaps all the way around it. Long mark, center mark. Okay. So I want you to be very careful as you center mark this thing uh, to make it look uh, appropriate. Notice the center marks stick out here roughly three millimeters of eighth of an inch. That's not a measured distance. You just eyeball that. Uh, so exercise good eye there and try to keep these all about the same. You can look at one of the existing center marks to get an idea of about how far to stick out. And you'll notice I'm sticking out a little bit further on this arc. Um, and that's okay, but don't get too carried away. If it's sticking out there 15 millimeters or something, that would be too far. All right, I'm going to get rid of this drawing now. I'm only going to construct uh, this curved slot and these two features here. I'm not going to put this in. I'm not going to put these tangent tangent radii in. You can lay all this geometry in there. I just want to show you how we get this kind of portion of the part here. Okay. All right, let's throw that away. And uh, we'll start a new file. This is a metric part, so a metric laser. And uh, I want to start right here with these circles. So I'm going to draw a circle C, enter. I'll just pick a point and uh, we'll do a diameter, 44. I'll do a second circle uh, from the same center part, D for diameter, and 28.5. Okay, that's these two circles here, because all the dimensions come from this point. So this has to go in first. I need to go 60 millimeters over to get to here, and that's an arc, right? So I'm going to draw a circle from the same center point with a radius of 60. Okay, that's that point right, right over here. Okay, so we have to assume that radius is 60, because we know the center point's right here for this arc. We can see these converging lines right on that center point. And this distance is 60, so that arc has a radius of 60. All right, I'm going to draw a line from the center point out. And I'm going to take it from the center point. I'm just going to stretch it way out here. So we get that horizontal line through the part. I'm going to drop a line from here down straight. And I'm going to offset the 148 millimeters. 148. Pick that line, click to the left. This is that 148 millimeter line right here. Now I need to come back 25, so I'm going to offset 25. We'll pick and click over to that side. All right, uh, let's start with the nose here. So I have an R22 and R11 to form this uh, double slot shape. So we're going to do a circle from here at a radius of 11. We'll do the sim same circle here. I'll just hit enter. I get the same size. We'll do a circle from here with a radius of 22. And then a circle from here. And I just hit enter. I get the same size. All right, I need to connect these. I'm actually going to cheat here because I, I have the toolbar cut off. Uh, you won't need to do this. You can pick quadrant points, but I'm going to just pull those up and then I can do lines from the intersections here intersection to intersection intersection to intersection and there's my four lines I have a lot of trimming to do in here right so let's do that we're gonna TR for trim and I'm gonna pick these four lines that I just drew as my cutting edges and hit enter that way I can cleanly get rid of these without too much hassle and I'm going to have to erase that piece. There we go. So there is that slot. And uh, we'll get rid of these lines now because those will go into center lines down the road. All right, now over to this side. I'm going to put that 40 degree center line in there. So I'm going to do a line from the center point. And I'm going to do the angle override again. So I'll shift and uh, get that angle bracket. And then 40 degrees and hit enter. And I'm just going to come out here somewhere. Um, if it makes you feel better, you can flip those onto the center layer just so you can keep track of what's what. Um, now, uh, I don't need that line. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is uh, uh, trim this up. So let's trim that. Let's get rid of that. 
and I'll erase this piece and I'm just going to keep this piece. Well, it's a radius of 11 or radius of 22. So I could just offset to get those. I'm going to get these four new arcs here. So I'm going to go offset 11. And 22 is just 2 times 11, so I really can just go in and out like so. That'll give me all those distances of 11 and 22 out. If you want to check yourself, if you were concerned, I could do a dimension. You haven't used the dimension tool yet, but I can check with a dimension and just see that that's 22. I'll click on linear dimension here and I'll check this distance, make sure it's 11. Sure enough. So if you ever need to check yourself, you can use the dimension tools up here. Uh, linear dimension, horizontal or vertical. Um, this is a radius, diameter, etc. So you can check your own work. All right, I need to put these end cap arcs on here. There's two different ways I'll show you. Uh, first, we'll do it by circle. So I can do circle, center point here, radius here, circle, center point here, radius here. Well, you can see there's going to be a lot of trimming that's going to go on there. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I could trim, and then I have to get rid of all these pieces like so. Now, I'm not a big fan of trimming when you don't need to, so I'm going to show you how to do this as an arc. So we're going to go to the arc tool, and I'm going to do a start, excuse me, start, end, I'm sorry, center, start, end. You can see there's lots of options. Center, start, end for my radius, because we know the center point, the start point, and the end point. So center, start, end. So let's take a look at that. Center point. Remember they revolve counterclockwise, start point, and then we'll wrap that around end point. I'll go up, draw, and arc. It should give me the same option, center, start, end. And I'll go center point, start point, end point, and then I have no trimming to do. All right. I'm going to take that arc out of there because we're going to have to put it back in now uh, to make it look right because I do want to show you how to center mark this. I'm going to delete the center line. Again, I'm not going to put the circle up here. I'm not going to put the geometry down here. I'm going to let you do that. Listen to your lecture carefully, especially about this line. This line is not connected to those intersections right there. It is tangent to the arc and tangent to the arc. Okay, This line right here, tangent on both ends, so be very careful. All right, But I do want to center mark this up. So I'm going to go to the center mark tool. I think the center layer is my current layer. And we'll pick that. It is not my current layer, so let's fix that. Switch to the center layer. Don't put center marks in if you're not on the center layer. It's a lot of work to get them changed. We'll hit enter to repeat, enter to repeat, and we're going to stop right there. I'm going to draw in that circle again uh, with a radius of 60. All right, now we've got to make this look right. I talked about that at the beginning. Uh, so, I'm going to take this center mark, I'm going to stretch it all the way out the end of the part and try and get that three millimeters or so. That's too close, so we'll go like that. Um, on this end, zoom way up here, you can see that I don't have that plus mark in the clear anymore. I, it's covered up, so I'm going to delete one of those lines in there. And then I have this one clear now, but this one still is not, so I have to grip that line and pull this back a little bit. Again, you can just eyeball it. That looks a little better now. And I'll just connect these. So I'll just grab this one. I'll connect. That gives me a nice look. I have a clear plus mark here, so that's good. And we're not going to get a clear plus mark here, and that's okay. Um, Alright, now this outer circle, as you can see on the drawing on the right, it sticks out on each end three, four, five millimeters, somewhere in there. I'm going to show you two different ways to make that happen. One option would be I could draw a line. Again, this is more work, I think, than it's worth, but I could draw a line right there. And I could draw a line over here. Oh. Mr. Randy made a mistake there. I'll draw a line over here. Zoom back a bit. And I could use the trim tool. Now I could trim and pick those two lines, hit enter, and get rid of that piece. So that's one way, and then now erase these two lines, of course. That's one way you could do that. I'm going to undo, undo, undo. Let's get those lines out of there. 
There we go. That's one way I could do that. Uh, I'm going to show you a little different way. This is just less clicks. So I'm going to go to Draw, and I'm going to go to the Break tool, if I can find it here. I don't think it's going to show it to me. So I'm going to just type it, so we'll do that. That's all right. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong toolbar. Break, right there. Um, so it, for you, you'll have to click on the Modify bar and get that command. You can also type BR. So we want this Break tool here, not this one, but this one with the gap break. All right. So I'm going to click my first break point uh, right about here. I'm going to touch the edge of the square pick box right about to the edge of that circle. Now I have to go counterclockwise to my second break point. If you clicked here first and here second, it'd take the wrong half of the circle out. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to get close to that circle if I touch the circle, do you see the center point light up? Look at the center point in here. When I touch the circle, if I clicked right now, uh, AutoCAD would go at zero degrees for the other break point, which would not be appropriate. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my mouse uh, off of that center point, and I need to unhook that center point right there. And I'm going to click right about there. Um, and if it's still too long, you could use the break tool, the break at tool, um, and snip the end off a little bit if, if it were too long. Um, so you can use that to tweak the end. So that's how we get that arc in there. We want to see again about the same overhang sticking out as everywhere else. Alright, so you would finish in these circles and do all these tangent tangent radiuses uh, to finish up this part. So you have it. Uh, the next two geometric construction problems. Uh, and as always, enjoy.